Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. Are you looking for a fun, unique project? Well, I've got just the thing for you. This is such a cool concept. There's no quilting, no binding, no handwork. And at the end, there's this fancy twist that hides the center seam. It's like magic. So let's do some magic. For our project today, I'm going to be making a table runner. It's out of this braided twist book. This is made by Cheryl Phillips with Phillips Fiber Arts. Cheryl was kind enough to give us permission to make a video for you. Out of respect for Cheryl, I won't be sharing every single page. However, you'll be able to walk through the process with me if you have this book and tool set. Go ahead and get everything cut out. On page four of your book, you'll see a diagram with the necessary cuts. Now, Cheryl does specify that the way that you cut out your fabric doesn't allow for any errors. So if you find that you're a person that you know, maybe has a cutting oopsie once in a while, you might wanna get just a little bit more than what's called for. Grab your A fabric square, ensure that it's right side up, and then take your tool and line the left side with the A line and the bottom with the A line. I will try my best to keep my head out of the shot, but I do like to look from directly above just to make sure that I do have it lined up properly. Once you're certain that you have it lined up, you can take your rotary cutter and cut along the outside. If you've never used ruler grips, I suggest getting some. As you hold it down, those grips are gonna keep it in place versus the tool sliding all over the place. We need two of those, so just repeat that process. Next, grab your rectangle B piece and place it right side up. This time, align the B lines of the tool with the edges of the fabric. Isn't that neat? Cut along the inside edge of the tool. I started with a 45 millimeter rotary cutter, but I found it easier especially on these inside cuts to use my 28 millimeter. Cut two of these as well. Grab one of your A pieces and one of your B pieces that you just cut, and we're going to find the center of the curves. To do that, you just simply fold this in half and then bring it over and pinch that. I just have to point out something that I absolutely loved about this book. If I was doing this on any other project, I would fold that and think I cut something incorrectly because it's not lining up. She specifically notes to pinch it and that the sides are not the same length. I just love that reassurance. I will find the center on this one. If it makes it easier for you to see after you've creased it, you can just make a little line with a marking tool. She's got this down first and then it specifies that it's the wrong side. Oh, and then I did it wrong. There we go. <laughs> Just like that, we're going to match up those centers. This end and put it to this end and make it straight. I know it looks a little weird, but it will work perfect. Just have to bring it over there. And I'm trying my best to keep my hands away so you can see what I'm doing. But that's one thing that's wonderful about the book. She's got a perfect diagram showing you this. And now we're going to do the same thing with this other side, taking that end, bringing it down, and matching it up with this end. With this one, I don't want it to start to turn, so I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in there. Work your way around. I like to put another one in the middle. Let's make sure everything's even, looks good. If you wanna put a few more pins in, you can. On my practice one, I went a little pin happy and that seemed to help. So I'm just gonna put a couple more pins in there. And after I'm done pinning, we'll take it to the sewing machine and we'll sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the curve. Curves can be a little bit tricky. Take your time. If you need to lift up your foot, that's fine. Readjust the fabric. It's better to go slow and make sure you do it right. Normally, I prefer using my quarter inch foot with guide. However, when I did my practice runner, I really liked using the quarter inch patchwork foot. That one worked great. It was easy to see everything lined up perfectly. And if you use the clear one, that would even be better. Now let's clip all our thread. Make sure you do that as you go. And then we're gonna press towards A. And then repeat that process and make another one of these. Next, cut out your fusible fleece as indicated in the instructions. You want to fold the fleece rectangle in half. Make sure all the edges line up. I'll do this on one and then you can repeat the process for the other ones. The folded edge should be on the top. Place your template on the fusible fleece, this time using the marks on the tool that say fleece. Cut along the inside of the template. 
Do this with all your fleece pieces. Grab your two pieces that you just made with your A and B fabric. We're going to use them to make our end cap sides. This time place the fabric wrong side up. Place your tool on the fabric and align the tool ends with the edge of the fabric. Notice that this tool has little dashed lines that match up perfectly with your curved stitches. Once everything is lined up perfectly, carefully cut along the outside. Repeat this process to make two. Now I'm going to continue cutting half circles for the remaining A, B, and K fabric as indicated by the pattern. To make the first side of one end cap, you'll need an AB half circle and one of your A half circles. Find the center. On the AB half circle, your seam is the center, so that makes it nice and easy. However, on the A half circle, fold it in half and mark that midpoint. Then with right sides together, match those up and pin. Next, sew from the center mark to the bottom half circle. This needs to be an exact quarter inch. When you have to get directly on the seam line, I find it easier to put your needle down first and then put your foot down. You wanna start and make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end. This part is really important because it ensures that the fun twist part works well and nothing comes apart. Clip in one quarter inch. Make sure you do the clipping before you press. Now you can press open the seam. Here's an example of a little note that I love. She specifies that the center unsewn edges of the AB end cap will overlap. That's great information to have just to make sure everything's in place. Repeat this process to make one more AB end cap. Next, you'll need to repeat the process and make more using your K fabric. Because it doesn't have the seam to show you your center, you can simply fold them in half to find the center the way that you did before. And you'll also need two of those. Now we can put these together. Place your AB end cap and the K end cap right sides together. Make sure you line up your seams and pin everything. Sew around the outer edge, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and at the end. So the pattern states that we want to place the fusible fleece on the AB side, not on the K side. So just keep that in mind. You want it up to your stitch line, but not over. So this is gonna give it that structure, make it look really nice. So you don't want to tack that down. You wanna lift up your, your seam allowance, get that tucked under, and then depending on the fusible fleece that you're using, your instructions may be slightly different. You just wanna go ahead and do those according to the manufacturer's instructions. I found it easiest to do one side and then place this on and do the next side. So I'm going to get that attached and then we'll move forward. Now that I've fused it, we'll turn this right side out and then you just need to make sure everything's nice and straight. Once everything is straightened out, you just press it from both sides. Now that everything is pressed, I'm gonna stitch along each end at 1 8 of an inch, closing those sides. Begin stitching from the center going to the outside and make sure that you don't get the other piece stitched in. You want each side individually. You may find that because of the fusible fleece, your foot kind of shifts over, or your fabric, I should say, kind of shifts over. Just take your time, make sure that you get your 8 inch seam allowance. And then we'll repeat that process and do that for the other end cap. If there's a hard part of the project, that was it. It's all downhill from here. Now it's time to make our half circles. Place your K piece right side up and then place your A piece right side down. Sew along the curved edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure to backstitch at the beginning and at the end. Now you can fuse your fleece to the wrong side of the A fabric. Just as before, you want to Get the fleece up to the stitching line, but not covering it. And then flip it right side out. Press it on both sides, bring it to the sewing machine, and then edge stitch 1 8 inch from the edge. So just fold it in half and mark it at the center. Then you wanna snip in exactly 1 quarter inch. You will snip past that 1 8 inch edge stitch that you just did. Now make several more half circles as the pattern indicates. At this point, you can label everything. This is going to make it much easier on the next step. We're gonna do the left side first. It has a great little picture that shows you the top end cap. Fold this side out of the way, which we'll do in just a moment. And then KB just means K over B. So you're going to be showing the backing and then the B is underneath. 
and then you're going to swap it and do B on top and K underneath. And then lastly, you're gonna have the end cap. Because I have limited space, instead of doing this vertically, I'm going to put the book horizontally and hopefully that will help you visualize what I'm doing. I'm just gonna lift that up a little bit so you can still see. We'll get this completely out of the way. Now we've got our top end cap. Here's where the labels come in handy. Next, we're gonna do K over B. So I've got my half circle, K's on top, B's on the bottom. Now you wanna bring the tip of this all the way to the center. So you wanna get that lined up, make sure that it's snug in there and the edges are aligned. And it should be all the way to that tip to the bottom and it should be right at that slit. Make sure that it's pinned really well so it's not shifting on you. And when we go to sew, we don't wanna catch this other part. It needs to be free. We're gonna do right at a quarter inch in and then we're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. But we wanna make sure everything is pinned well. So now that we're done with that one, I can set that aside. The next one we'll be doing is B over K. And that's our half circle B over K. And the tip of this one starts at the cut. So we put that right in the center and then this slit should meet the bottom of this half circle. See, isn't that cool? Okay, lastly, we just need to attach our bottom end cap. So we'll pull this over here. And you've got the gist now, right? I'm gonna fold this out of the way as it indicates so we don't have to worry about that at all. It lines up perfectly, looks good. Now we can double check ourselves. We've got our picture. So normally you would do it vertically here. However, I found it doing it the second time. It was more convenient for me to do it horizontally anyway because I could see better where it lines up. So depending on how you want to, but still always double check that you've got your top end cap. Then you've got the KB, so K up, B down, B up, K down, and then your bottom end cap with K up. So everything looks good. And now at this point, we're going to start one quarter inch in right there and then do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down and stopping right here. And we're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And that is very important because when we twist it, there's gonna be some strain there. So you need to make sure that you do go and do back stitch at the beginning and back stitch at the end. Double check and make sure that that fabric is out of the way. You don't want to catch it, but you should be starting right at the top there. And then I'm going to do a quarter inch. Remember, start and then back stitch. And because of the bulk with the fusible fleece, I found that my fabric wanted to shift a little bit. So just take your time. If you need to, you can stop, keep your needle in, adjust your fabric a little bit, make sure you're on the right track. As you get close to the end, just make sure once again that the fabric is out of the way. You need to bring it just about to the end and then stop. Fabric's out of the way. You wanna go right to the tip. One more, there we go. Okay. There's the left side. Now we're looking at it this way, so we're gonna do the right side. So I'm gonna turn it to the side again. I know this looks a little funny right now, but stick with me. It'll come together really soon. This time, we're going to tuck it under. So it's going to be the KA. So K on top, A on bottom. Flip this under here. And this time we're connecting it 
this one. Try to keep my hands out of the way. But you get the idea. Once again, we're going to bring it all the way to the, the tip here. And then the bottom of this end cap matches up to the slit. Just take your time to match it up correctly. I know you're getting excited. When you're doing it by yourself and not trying to stay out of the camera shot, it's much easier. It's just I'm trying to stay out of the way. Currently it looks like it's wrong, but this is correct. So now we've got our KA, the next piece is going to be the AK. So that's our last one, AK. Once again, it's tucked underneath. We're going to bring it to that slit. And then the bottom of this one is going to match up to that slit. Nothing is connected to the left side. You're just working on the right now. And then it shows the bottom end cap. This part is tucked under. So we want to bring this one right there, right at the center. Gonna throw a few extra pins in there just to make sure everything is secure. The end cap on top, then K, A underneath, A, K underneath, and then the end cap is tucked under. Everything lines up just right. Looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna move my book again. And it does state in the book to bring it to the sewing machine and put the bottom on top because it just makes it easier for you to get your presser foot next to that area. So we're gonna do the same thing now and we're going to sew the right side. Are you thinking to yourself, this doesn't look right? What did I do wrong? Absolutely nothing. This is exactly how it's supposed to look. This is where the magic happens. Think of it as three layers. Grab the first layer and twist, then grab one and two and twist, and then grab one, two, three, and twist. Shoot me a comment if this messes with your brain because it just made mine go Amazing, right? Now the last thing that needs to be done, you just need to press it from both sides, make sure that you straighten and smooth all the center seams, and then you can work on the intersections here and interlock them. See, look how nice that looks. And then when you're all done, the directions will tell you how to take your heat and bond and get everything situated. I have to do just one more shout out to Miss Phillips. Thank you again for such a cool design, as well as allowing me to do a video on it. It was a ton of fun. And thank you for joining me for the whole video, and I hope you enjoyed making your table runner. Until next time, happy sewing everybody.